March 21st, St. Benedict Abbot. St. Benedict was born of a noble Italian family about the year 480. When a boy, he was sent to Rome and there placed in the public schools. But scared by the licentiousness of the Roman youth, he fled to the desert mountains of Subiaco. Here he was directed by the Holy Ghost into a cave, deep, craggy, and almost inaccessible. He lived there for three years, unknown to anyone save the holy monk Romanus, who assisted the young man by clothing him with a sheepskin habit. Also, daily, he would bring bread for Benedict, who would lower a basket, and Romanus would place the bread in, and it would be drawn back up. The fame of St. Benedict's sanctity soon gathered disciples around him. The rigor of his rule, however, drew on him the hatred of some of the monks, and one of them mixed poison with the abbot's drink. But when the saint made the sign of the cross on the poison bowl, it broke and fell in pieces to the ground. After he had built twelve monasteries in Subiaco, he removed to Monte Cassino, where he founded an abbey in which he wrote his rule and lived until his death. By prayer he did all things, wrought miracles, saw visions, and prophesied. Once, a peasant, whose boy had just died, ran in anguish to St. Benedict, crying out, Give me back my son! The monks joined the poor man in his entreaties, but the saint replied, Such miracles are not for us to work, but for the blessed apostles. Why would you lay upon me a burden which my weakness cannot bear? However, moved at length by compassion, he knelt down and, prostrating himself upon the body of the child, prayed earnestly. Then rising, he cried out, Behold not, O Lord, my sins, but the faith of this man who desireth the life of his son, and restore to the body that soul which thou hast taken away. Hardly had he spoken when the child's body began to tremble, and taking it by the hand, he restored it alive to his father. The great saint who had foretold so many other things was also forewarned of his own approaching death. He notified it to his disciples and six days before the end bade them dig his grave. As soon as this had been done, he was stricken with fever, and on the last day he received the body and blood of the Lord. Then, while the loving hands of the brethren were supporting his weak limbs, he uttered a final few words of prayer and died standing on his feet in the chapel with his hands uplifted toward heaven. He was buried beside St. Scholastica, his sister, on the site of the altar of Apollo, which he had cast down. The saints never feared to undertake any work, however hard, for God, because, distrusting self, they relied for assistance and support wholly upon prayer.